This is critical. Movies are about the moment where somebody's life changed. That's a quote from Christopher Walken. And I think it's about the best, most succinct, accurate definition of what really makes a movie as I've ever heard. So if movies are about the moment where somebody's life changed, that immediately begs a couple questions. Um, first, who is that somebody? That would be your lead, your hero. And secondly, why? Why now? Why is this moment in their life critical and effectively worth dramatizing? Why is it worth anybody's two hours and twelve dollars? Why should we care? Um, everybody knows most people resist change because it's usually hard work. Um, especially, you know, most of us resist it, especially if things in our lives seem reasonably tolerable or we just can't imagine anything better for ourselves. Things may not be great. In fact, they may be pretty god awful. But if that's what we're accustomed to, if that's our status quo, then I think most of us are inclined to keep doing what we're doing. It's only when life throws us a serious curve, when something shakes up that status quo, that we're most inclined to try to take some sort of new action and try to behave in new ways. So uh, for most of us, fictional characters included, um, we usually have to be in some way forced into it. Why would we change unless things have become in some way uncomfortable? Um, consequently, something must be broken or at least change in order for you to have a story. There sh must be some sort of problem introduced. Something must not be working as well as it might for your main character in order to propel them into action and into change. And the answer uh, as to why they change is they change because they have a problem. Um, it's been said if your main character doesn't have a problem, then you as a writer have a problem. And I'd even take that a step further and add that if they don't have a specific problem, you have a problem. So it's your job as the writer to really put the screws to them, to try to figure out what that specific problem is, confront them with it, put pressure on them, and force them into a situation where they really have no other choice but to take some sort of action and ultimately change somehow in order to deal with it. Um, they change because they have to in order to deal with the problem. So by the time the end credits roll, ideally something is different. Your hero is different. They, they've gained some not, something, some knowledge about themselves and or the world, and they've grown in some way that somehow frees them to live a more full life or not. Uh, in which case what you have on your hands is a tragedy. But most successful movies are not tragedies, so we're not going to really go that way today. Um, but if you think about it for a minute, it's kind of an interesting commentary on life that when people don't change, that's considered a quote-unquote tragedy. And, um, but if you want to err on the side of commerciality, I, you will leave your audience with at least a shred of hope, I think. William Goldman famously said, people want to believe nice things. And I think this speaks to a, a really basic, even primal human desire to always want to be moving forward in life, to want to be progressing somehow. And most people like a happy ending, you know, but there's, there's a one caveat to that, which is we like a happy ending provided it's an earned happy ending. And that's key. As long as we feel like the hero has really fought and worked hard to achieve whatever it is he ultimately gets, then we're satisfied. But in stories as in life, you know, we tend to be kind of annoyed by people who are simply handed everything. And we tend to admire and respect and root for those who work really hard for what they get. So you don't want to make life easy on your main character. You want to keep that in mind. Okay. Which brings me to the character arc. Um, and if movies are about the moment where somebody's life changed, then sort of a corollary of that, um, and, the, and another definition of a story, which I like, is a story is a vehicle for character transformation. Um, character arc refers to how your main character changes as a result of the story, over the course of the story. Um, it's what makes a story satisfying and gives its, an, its real emotional resonance. I think most of us want to believe on some level that the struggles we go through 
in life are not for nothing. <laughs> that somehow, some way, there's a reason. Whether that's empirically true or not, we want to believe it. And we want to believe that people, that we, we can improve, we can learn, we can grow, and triumph over <clears throat> our challenges, our misfortunes, our mistakes. We want to believe that people can change and become better, freer human beings. And so not only do we want to see the hero get what he wants, like I said, we want to believe he deserves it. That somehow in the big scheme of things, I think this speaks to our desire to think, somehow in the big scheme of things there's justice somewhere. Um, and to feel convinced that whatever he's earned, um, you know, feel convinced he's really earned whatever it is he's been seeking by virtue of hard work and having in some way become a better human being, a more authentic, more self-actualized person, the definition of self-actualization being reaching one's full potential. Um, so by the end, we usually see the main character has changed in some way, has in some way taken the reins of his own life, and become freer somehow, and is somehow living more fully. That's, that's your ideal character. Um, we get, we kind of, in a certain sense, go to watch somebody fight. I've spent some time in the film business. Um, so it came as a little bit of a surprise to me that after having spent a lot of years both analyzing material and creating my own, um, that I only just recently kind of realized this. Um, you know, but generally, we're not interested in stories about people who are on top of the world, for the most part. What's there to tell? You know, Bob, Bob went to climb Everest. He got to the top easily, scampered back down, everything worked out fine, the end. It's like, who cares, right? What intrigues us, what engages us, is, is the great struggle to climb, or the great fall, or the great climb back from the great fall. So whether you're consciously aware of it or not, on some level, the reason we plunk down our cash and spend our precious time in a movie theater is to watch somebody fight internally and externally, to watch them fight for love, for survival, for dignity, for acceptance, for freedom, for justice, for respect, and self-respect. These are sort of the larger universal things we can all understand and we all want. Obviously, the specifics change, but you know, as the saying goes, the fundamental things apply. We can, we can all relate to wanting these things. Um, and you know how sometimes the universe just seems to pile on and kick your ass? I hope I can say ass, by the way. Um, anyway, that's what, that's what movies are about, the point where the universe really kicks somebody's ass. We go to watch characters fight, but more importantly, what we really go to see and what, we re what, is, what engages us is to see somebody in some way overcome. And in that process, as I was saying, somehow become a better person. Um, what I, I really believe the primal full of stories is they illustrate for us how to learn to live more fully and overcome whatever's holding us back. Okay. So the implicit lesson of story being, and this is the other thing I hope if you take away nothing else, movies about the moment where somebody's life changed, and this is the other thing I think is critical, is what matters most in life is not what happens to us, it's what you do about it. It's not what happens to you, what you do about it. And I think, again, this is because life itself is often hard and bewildering and seemingly unfair, even for the most stalwart, um, even for the most fortunate among us. There's inevitably struggle and suffering and pain. We're all mere mortals. Um, so as the saying goes, nobody's coming to save us. It's up to us to save ourselves. So I think we take an immense vicarious pleasure in watching someone do that on screen. Okay. So now, let's break down some of the critical pieces that help make this happen. And, and I, again, I realize some of this is very basic, but um, it's easy to get lost. So, all right. Um, movie's made up of three acts. Act one is your beginning or your setup. That's about page one and 25. Act two is the body of your story, the bulk of your story. It's the longest act, twice as long, 25 to 80, and then the resolution from 80 to 110, give or take. These are rough numbers. Um, screenplays used to be 120 pages. It's now more like 110. For comedies, it's even a little bit less. But anyway, 